Hi guys, in today's video, I'm gonna be showing you five money-saving tips for your hobby. Some of the models, paints, and tools that you need to collect for this hobby can end up being quite expensive, but with a few cost-cutting measures, you can shave off some of that expense. Playing tabletop war games such as Warhammer can involve a bit of logistical planning, the main part being getting your army to the battlefield. There are quite a few companies that specialize in making containers, but some of them are more reasonably priced than others. A lot of the time they use little foam inserts inside these cases that can be quite annoying to get your models in and out. Depending on what army you play, this can be a bit of an arduous task when taking the minis in and out of the foam inserts. Especially if you've got a lot of banners and spikes and spears and things like that, they do tend to get broken easily. A cheap workaround that I found is using open stackable containers with magnet sheets stuck to the bottom. If you look around your local variety stores such as Daiso or Poundland in the UK, you can often find little stackable containers. The only thing you need to look out for is that they cover the height of your miniatures. If you have an army with particularly tall miniatures, just make sure you put them in the top one. I got mine from a shop called Daiso, which is here in Australia and Japan, and I also got these magnet strips from there as well. And the magnets I actually found on eBay. These magnet sheets are self-adhesive and all you pretty much do is stick them to the bottoms of your trays and then glue the magnets to the bottoms of all your bases of your miniatures. This is quite time consuming but it's worth it in the end. And also it gives you a little bit of extra weight on your minis which sometimes on uneven surfaces can be quite helpful. And once the magnet sheets are applied and the magnets are on the bases you can go ahead and start stacking these in. Once you're finished, you'll be able to stack these on top of each other and four or five of these sit perfectly behind the driver's seat of my car and they stay nice and snug for the whole journey. Just make sure, again, that the height is not going over the top of the lip, otherwise you're going to crush them with the one above. Basing minis is an essential final touch to making your army look fantastic. And there are a myriad of ways to go about this and I'm going to show you a few cheap DIY methods that I use. This flock here is a mix of sawdust and cheap acrylic paint. And flock is basically just a term for fake grass and earth. For the sawdust, I got this from a local cabinet makers. I called them up and asked them if I could come with a 10 litre bucket and grab as much as I could. They've usually got bins and bins full of it out the back and they're more than happy to see it go. Unless maybe one of the guys has got like 50 hamsters at home. Now the ratios of this can vary. I just did a little bit of trial and error. It was only cheap acrylic paint and just kept mixing it until it looked something that resembled flock. And then you just have to wait for it to dry and then you can start applying it with a bit of PVA glue. Now this next method is using coffee pods and you can use these before or after you've made your coffee but I would recommend using them after because you're going to get a coffee out of it. If you're using this after you've made your coffee just make sure you dry this out. If you're using the oven just make sure you use a really low setting and do it for about 10-15 minutes and just keep checking on it regularly and your house should smell like coffee afterwards. Then when your coffee is all dry just mix it in a little cup with a little bit of cheap acrylic paint and slop this on however you want. Now this is sort of an equivalent to Games Workshop Sterling Mud or Astro Granite Debris, that kind of texture paint, but it's a lot cheaper. And you don't need to worry too much about what colour paint you use with this because you can always paint it afterwards. I tend to put this on first and then start airbrushing the models if I'm going to be airbrushing. A couple of other inexpensive basing materials are corks, which you can buy in bulk from eBay, and you can just pick them apart and they make cool little chunks for rocks and things like that and cork sheets as well, which are also pretty inexpensive. You can use these to layer up and make little rocky structures if you like. And any cool sticks or rocks that you see around your garden or on your travels, pick them up and take them with you, as long as you're not in like a national park or something like that. You don't want to accidentally end up putting some rare dinosaur fossil on your model. Post mortem contraction of the posterior neck like. Yeah, it's good shape too. And I always keep all the little bits of models that I cut off for conversions and kit bashes. An important thing to remember though when you're using organic materials is to dry and seal them because otherwise they'll start decomposing. To do this, you can either leave them in the sun for a while or you can do the same thing, put them in the oven. But if you're using wood, be particularly careful and pay attention to what you're doing. Sorry. Oh, that's my good one, mother or if you have access to a dehydrator, that is perfect. And the polys in the paints and the varnish will slow the decomposition process. Not completely, one day they are going to decompose, but that might be a few decades from now, so I wouldn't worry about it too much. The most expensive part of this hobby is the miniatures themselves. That's why websites like eBay, Gumtree and Facebook Marketplace are a great resource. Not only for secondhand models but also for models from cheaper retailers and also boxes that people split up and sell individually. So if there's a box set out and you only like a few of the models you can usually buy them if you search them individually. eBay is also a great resource for bits. If there's a conversion idea that you want to do and you don't want to have to buy two complete sets you can look for those individual parts on eBay and 9 times out of 10 you'll find what you're looking for. 
even if it's bits of iconography or particular weapons that you're looking for, if you know the exact kit that you're looking for stuff from, that's also a big help. It's also great for generating ideas. For example, you can search for simple terms like Warhammer Swords and you'll be presented with a number of options. Facebook Marketplace is a great source for people offloading their old collections, whether they're moving house or their partners told them to sell it or something. You can get some pretty good deals on used collections. And even if the models are painted, you can strip this using 100% isopropyl alcohol and a toothbrush. I'll show you how to do this in a later video. A good prep, prime and clean routine can save you having to buy brushes nearly as often. With prevention and aftercare, you can keep even cheap brushes looking really good for years. For most of my work, I use Citadel and Army Painter brushes, just the standard ones. And I've got some Citadel brushes that I've had for about two and a half years. Now the tips aren't the best on them, but because I've looked after them, I can still use them for less delicate jobs. I don't really like buying expensive brushes because you're more upset when you destroy them. If I'm doing something really delicate, then I'll break out the Winsor & Newton brushes, but they don't actually get out very often. The first step is to prep your brush by wetting it in water, and this will make the bristles more malleable and less prone to breakage. The next tip is to make sure you don't load the brush more than about two thirds down the way of the bristles. This will prevent the paint from going into what's called the ferrule, the bit that holds the bristles together. Generally, this is what causes most brushes to break down. When paint dries inside this ferrule, the bristles become distorted and will not form a nice point. And once it's in there and dry, it's really hard to get out, if not impossible. If you happen to get paint inside the ferrule whilst you're painting, it's not the end of the world. Just make sure you wash it as soon as possible and as an extra measure, just roll the end of the ferrule on a bit of clean paper towel. Making sure that the bristles are disturbed as little as possible while you're doing this. Sometimes if your paint is too thin, also it can travel up the bristles a lot quicker than anticipated. So just be mindful of that when you're doing thin washes like wet blending and things like that. And when it comes to aftercare, there's only one product you need to know, Masters Brush Cleaner. Now these can be about $30 for a tub, but this has probably saved me hundreds in new brushes. I'm sure there are other products in there, but this is my favorite. And this tub has lasted me for about three years and it's not even half gone. When using this soap, the first step is to wash the paint off your bristles in your water pipe, clean water of course. Drag the brush gently through this soap and as you do, just rotate it. And this rotation will help the brush form a new point. Once you can see the soap on the bristles, just gently massage it onto the back of your hand doing the same twisting motion, just until you can start to see it lather and bubble. You can also make little circular motions on the back of your hand with the tip of the brush, and this will do pretty much the same thing as the twist, but it's a little bit more fun. Once it's nice and lathered up, rinse it off again and just drag it across gently on some clean paper towel. And when I'm sure all the paint's off the brush, I like to drag it back through the residue that's on the back of my hand. This creates a nice little barrier on the brush and keeps that point. When your brush finally meets the end of its life, do not mourn for they can find new life as a rough brush. A rough brush is a brush you use for things like texture paints and special effect paints, stuff that you wouldn't usually want on your normal brushes. This Army Painter brush has been with me for many, many years and is now resigned to doing the more fun jobs. And I always make sure that it gets out to see a bit of action every now and again. Can't thank us enough. Every generation stinks but ours. Water can fill the job of many expensive painting mediums. Products like slow dry retarder and acrylic mediums can be great for things like wet blending, but you can still do a pretty good job with plain old water. Here's an example of wet blending using only water. I've spent a lot of money in the past buying all these expensive fancy products, but to be honest, I usually go back to just using water anyway, just because it's simpler and I understand how it works. And another thing that helps you blend things easier is the use of a wet palette. And these are a game changer if you've never used one before. These wet palettes are basically a piece of sponge with a piece of baking paper or equivalent inside a sealed container. And these sealed containers will stop your paints drying out nearly as fast. And this is obviously gonna save you money in the long run having to keep using new paint every time it dries up. And also if you've been mixing your own colors and blending and you wanna use that color again, this wet palette generally saves it for you so you don't have to try and mix the exact paint again. You can make these at home using takeaway containers, sponges and baking paper and that's pretty much it. Just lay the sponge at the bottom of the takeaway container, get it nice and wet and then place the baking paper over the top. When you apply the water to the sponge, you want it to be sodden but you don't want any water to be escaping from the sponge. And just remember to keep these out of sunlight if you're using a see-through takeaway container because they can go moldy. Thank you for watching, I hope you can take something from this video for your own hobby and if you have any of your own money saving tips i'd love to hear them so please put them in the comments so other people can see them and share them see you in the next video